Victory with Jackie. Today, we will be taking a look at Keith Haring, an American artist that was part of the pop art movement. Haring was known for his adoption of 1980s New York street culture. With Pride Month having just passed, and with the current climate of civil unrest, it is particularly relevant to remember Haring and the part that social activism played in his art. Keith Haring was born in Reading, Pennsylvania in 1958. He was raised in the United Church of God. Herring's early influences were Walt Disney cartoons, Dr. Seuss, Charles Schultz, and the Looney Tunes characters. He began studying commercial art at Pittsburgh's Ivy School of Professional Art. However, he soon lost interest and dropped out. As a young adult, Herring had a maintenance job at the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts. There, he was able to explore the art of Jean Dubuffet, Jackson Pollock, and Mark Toby. He was inspired to create large images that featured writing and characters. Influenced by Christo, Herring became familiar with the ways of incorporating the public into his art. In 1978, Herring moved to New York to study painting at the School of Visual Arts. He began to p- receive public attention when he started doing graffiti in the New York subways. He created white chalk drawings on black advertisement paper, treating the subway as his laboratory where he could experiment and create his artwork in a free space. He began organizing exhibitions at Club 57, a gallery that focused on emerging artists. Around this time, Herring began signing his work with the Radiant Baby tag. Herring began using symbols and images like barking dogs and large hearts to create a sort of iconography in his work. He often used commercial material to spread his work and messages. This included mass producing buttons and magnets and working on top of subway ads. In the early 80s, Herring used found objects and simple materials from hardware stores to create his work. 1982 was an important year for Herring. He was featured in the Document Art Fair in Germany, as well as the Sao Paulo Biennial in Brazil. Between 1982 and 1989, Herring created more than 50 public artworks in dozens of cities around the world. One of his works from 1982, Untitled, depicts two figures with a radiant love heart motif, which critics interpreted as a symbol of homosexual love. Throughout the 80s, Herring made art for a variety of commercial enterprises, such as nightclubs and discos, MTV set decorations, a backdrop for the Live Aid concert in Philly, and props for various dance works. His vibrant images became increasingly iconic as symbols of public art. Herring used his art as a vehicle for his political activism. He created a Free South Africa poster in 1985, and the same year began a project titled City Kids Speak on Liberty, which involved 1,000 children. In 1986, he was asked by the Checkpoint Charlie Museum to create a mural on the Berlin Wall. It was 300 meters long and depicted red and black interlocking human figures against a yellow background. The colors were a representation of the German flag and symbolized the hope of unity between East and West Germany. In April 1986, Herring opened Pop Shop, where his work was readily available for purchase at reasonable prices. However, he was highly criticized for this move, as people believed that the commercialization of his work removed it from the realm of high art. In response, Herring said, I could earn more money if I just painted a few things and jacked up the price. My shop is an extension of what I was doing in the subway stations, breaking down the barriers between high and low art. Herring believed that commercialization allowed his art to be easier and more affordable to own. Accessibility to art was always an important part of Herring's practice. This attempt at accessibility can also be seen in his figures, not having discernible races, ages, or identities. His sociopolitical views continue to surface in his art, displaying themes surrounding anti-apartheid, AIDS awareness, and the crack cocaine epidemic. His Crack is Whack mural is visible from New York's FDR Drive. It was originally considered vandalism by the NYPD, and Herring was arrested. In 1989, he criticized the avoidance of social issues such as AIDS through a piece called Rebel with Many Causes that revolves around a theme of hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Herring was openly gay and used his work to advocate for safe sex. In 1988, he was diagnosed with HIV. Herring used his imagery in his final years to speak about his illness and to generate activism and awareness about AIDS. He died in 1990 at the age of 31. Herring used his bright colors and cartoonish images to spread messages that were important to him. He worked towards changing the world through his art. Thank you for learning about Keith Herring with me, and see you at Art on the Deck this afternoon.